talking a little bit about uh, what the, the streets of, of, of Kabul were like, and I, I'd like you to to talk about uh, what the, the facility, the music school itself was like, and uh, and then also about the, the the students that you were teaching, and what what ages they were, um, and uh, and and what you think their studying music uh, does for them. So um, yeah, the facility itself was uh, it's uh, it's actually was surprisingly good. I thought um, it had a, it was it was a, a pretty bare bones building. Um, it didn't have central heat, um, but it's something you get used to in Kabul. It's kind of layering up. Um, and uh, um, but it had it had small classrooms, um, a very small performance space. Um, but they just received funding from a Norwegian aid group um, to to build a new concert hall next year. So they'll have a small recital hall, which is very exciting. Um, but yeah, they had a bunch of small classrooms. Um, they had a library um, with with uh, a lot of educational titles, and they had a, they own a lot of instruments through donations and so forth. Um, so it's it's not I, I mean compared to what we might see even in a normal American middle school, it's not great, um, but it's a whole lot more than than you might expect to find in the heart of Kabul. And you brought um, uh, some uh, instruments and and things with you, right? Well, I, I, I not just some. Um, I have to say, I uh, right before I left, I sent out an email to my colleagues in the photo orchestra, and I, you know, I, I said. If you have some old, you know, books that you might think would be useful, or maybe some strings uh, for string instruments or oil for maintaining brass instruments, um, I could put it in my suitcase and bring it over. Um, and I was completely overwhelmed um, by a flood of donations uh, from people in the orchestra, and it just, um, I have to say, it was just, it was incredibly moving to me to come in that week and every day to have people just bringing in um, stuff that they went out to the store and bought new. And uh, I mean, I don't need to tell you that we in the Florida Orchestra are not particularly wealthy. Um, so for people to, you know, to go to stores and find materials that they thought would be useful, um, to dig in their closets and find usable violin bows for me to bring over, um, to give books that actually had personal value to them, but say this book will do more good in in Kabul than it will on my bookshelf. Um, I was I was really completely overwhelmed, um, and I, I just ended up buying another suitcase so that I could I could bring over um, everything that I got. Um, and and needless to say, the school was thrilled to get everything they got. Um, I uh, they cataloged everything, um, so I, there's now a major donor to the Afghan National Institute of Music is the Florida Orchestra Musicians Association. I'm very proud of that. Wow, um, that's, that's so, excellent. Um, so yeah, thank you, Florida Orchestra. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, um, and so you know, the school relies on this kind of stuff because you know, here in the U.S., you know, if you have a problem with your instrument, you go out, you buy another string. You can go to a music shop. There are a lot of band shops around still. You get some oil. You order it online. There is no way of getting those materials in Kabul. You know, so they completely rely for the time being on what people bring in. Can you talk to me about what what you think music and learning music can do for these kids in Afghanistan uh, in general and and as compared to the students that you teach here at USF? Yeah, and that's that's a really good question because certainly when you find yourself in a place like Kabul, you have to ask yourself, you know, what what kind of good you're doing because the place is so precarious um, and. You know, unfortunately, looking at Kabul, you know that it could descend back into warfare and, and chaos at any time, and these kids will be possibly swept up in it. Um, but, but I think you know, I think that that the the only the only reason to do anything in this world is to make it a better and a more beautiful place, and. Uh, um, and so, you know, you, you, can, you can give them, you know, you can give them food and you can teach them English, um, and you can teach them business, you can tell them not to be violent, but, but if you can give them a skill that, that makes their life better and the lives of people around them better, I, I can't imagine anything of more value that you can really do in the world. And, um, 
an interesting thing you ask when it when it when when to compare it to the kids here is that the kids there, you know, especially the older ones, like the high school age ones, um, have this amazing vision, um, which which may be completely unrealistic, um, but but so beautiful. Um, they were their their goal in life. Their goals in life are to be middle school band directors. They imagine an Afghanistan where there are schools for girls and boys with bands, and they would be teaching these kids band instruments. And, and that would be true not just at one isolated spot in Kabul, but throughout the country. Um, and that was their goal, and what they saw themselves doing, and, and they imagined perhaps in 40 or 50 years there would be enough good musicians in Afghanistan, there might be an Afghanistan Philharmonic. Um, and like I said, uh, you know, who can argue with a vision like that? And who wouldn't want to be part of that kind of vision? You know, whether or not it's realistic, um, you know. And so I was, I, I found myself, you know, when a trumpet student came to me, he's like, well, I need to learn horn because I'm going to be teaching kids someday that are going to need to learn how to play horn well, and I need to know something about it. That kind of long thinking, you know, in a, in a chaotic war-torn place is just really beautiful. And I think, I think the inspiration that music provides is, is really a big part of that. Um, so, um, so I, I, I only wish that I could give more time and, and space to these kids, but I'm certainly glad to be a small part of that.